Hey everyone, this is Nick and today I have yet another mini PC to talk about. This time it's the Mini Forum UM580 and it's as always a very small form factor with a very powerful CPU and an attainable price tag. Now, contrary to other mini PCs that I tried, this one doesn't come with Linux pre-installed. But as we'll see in the video, it just runs Linux perfectly. There's absolutely no issues there. And with its specs and its price range, I couldn't help but feel that it was really well positioned to be some kind of Steam Deck console, as in the same performance as a Steam Deck, but in a more console form factor for those who don't really need a handheld or a controller attached to their console. So let's take a look at the UM580 and see what it can do. What today's sponsor can do though is help you secure and monitor your internet connection. This video is sponsored by Safing. They make the Portmaster, which is an amazing tool that lets you control and monitor your internet connection with a simple graphical user interface. You get block lists, you get profiles depending on your current connection, and you can even tweak settings per app. It's also completely open source and free. Safing also makes the SPN or Safing Privacy Network. It's a powerful VPN alternative which spreads your connections across the globe instead of rerouting all your connections to only one server. With the SPN, you can be everywhere at once and no website can build a profile from your visits and your location. Of course, you also get all the benefits from a traditional VPN. If that's something you'd like to try, and if you want to help support Safing's open source work, you can subscribe to the SPN right now, or download the Portmaster by heading in the link in the description below. So let's begin with the specs. The UM580 is a 13 cm square, and it's 4.6 cm tall. It's very small, it's all black with plenty of ventilation grills, and it has a nice striped motif on the top lid with minimal Minis Forum branding. It comes with a Ryzen 7 5800H, which is a pretty powerful CPU, and it has a lot of ports. You're getting 2.5 gig Ethernet, two HDMI ports that go up to 4K at 60 Hz, an audio jack, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3.2 ports, and three USB-C ports. One of these ports is data only on the front, one supports DisplayPort on the front as well, and one supports Power, DisplayPort, and Alt Mode. Now this feature is pretty interesting because it means that this mini PC can be powered by your display. If your display supports it, you just have one cable linking the PC to the display and the power comes through the display to the PC. You don't need the power brick or the wall adapter. Now the immediate issue that I see here is that this mini PC does not have a USB-A port on the front. It's a minor problem, but if you often plug in USB sticks, you're gonna be disappointed that you have to reach out all the way to the back of the device. But this thing can also support up to four displays that run at 4K 60 FPS, thanks to the two HDMI ports and the two USB-C ports that support DisplayPort. Now, of course, you can open this little thing up, but you will need to remove all the rubber feet and pads to expose the screws. Now, fortunately, they include replacements in the box. You can reuse the ones you removed, but they won't stick as well as brand new ones. Once you're inside, you can upgrade the RAM, which is dual slot DDR4, and it can go up to 64 gigs. You can also replace the M.2 SSD, and you have a nice little slot on the back of the case where you can screw a 2.5 inch SATA drive and plug it in using the included little cable. By default, the UM580 comes with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD for $550. If you already have what you need, you can also buy it bare bones with no RAM or SSD for $439. And for $599, you get 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD, which feels reasonable in terms of pricing. And as always, Minis Forum include a lot of stuff in the box. These guys are pretty generous. And no, before you ask, this review isn't sponsored. They didn't pay me a single cent. So not only do you get what you need to install a 2.5 inch drive, but you also get a small stand to have the PC vertically. You have a VESA mount that screws to the bottom of the case with all the necessary screws. You have extra rubber feet, you get an HDMI 2 cable and the wall charger, which is pretty big, but has one USB-A port and three USB-C ports, one of which you'll need to use the included USB-C to USB-C cable to power the device. 
Both cables are really, really short though, so you might want to use something else if your monitor isn't extremely close to your PC. So this power plug is actually pretty amazing. It can deliver up to 100 watts of power. The USB-A port can only draw up to 22.5, the first two USB-C can draw up to the full 100, and the last USB-C port can only draw up to 20 watts. Honestly, what I would do is to grab this little power plug and use it for when I travel, instead of using it to plug in the mini PC. Now, in terms of design, this PC just looks better than the ones I had reviewed previously. The black case looks a lot better than the silver one, and it will blend in a lot more with the rest of your setup, I think. And if it doesn't, well, you can just hide it by screwing it under your desk or behind your monitor, and it's out of the way. So, since this thing came with Windows 11, I promptly replaced it with a Linux distro, and I decided to go for Holo ISO, because I really wanted to try out game performance and see how well it would work as a Steam Deck console. So, Holo ISO doesn't have the latest Linux kernel, and I did encounter issues with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth not working when using the default Neptune kernel. But everything worked using the Holo ISO kernel, offered as an advanced boot option, so all is well and good. On Holo ISO, everything runs really well, whether it's the SteamOS interface or the desktop mode. There's nothing to complain about, it's super smooth, super efficient, I could connect to a Bluetooth Xbox controller and navigate this way. It was a dream. Especially compared to my experience with Holo ISO on NVIDIA graphics, where everything was extremely laggy, extremely buggy, and generally nothing would run. Now, the entire thing is powered by a Ryzen 7 5800H, and this is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU with a base clock of 3.2GHz and turbo boost up to 4.4. Its default TDP is 45 watts, and that's what this mini PC uses out of the box. On Geekbench, it got 1407 in single-core and 7492 in multi-core, which is pretty good for a PC that size and that costs less than $600. The fan is audible under load, but nothing crazy like a gaming laptop. So it is a very good performer. This CPU is powerful and it will handle basically anything you throw at it, from rendering to modeling to video editing to just basic office work and email. It's going to be a very, very competent PC for the price. But how well does it perform when you try to use it as a game console? So I tried a few games from the SteamOS interface. Note that this means that all games are limited to 720p, but can be upscaled using FSR to the native resolution of your monitor. This is mainly to compare with performance on the deck. Of course, you can run these titles from desktop mode or in a normal Linux distro with all the resolutions that you might want to run them on. So in Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy, at high details without VSync, you're getting a relatively smooth 40 FPS while being upscaled from 720p to 1080p. If you lower everything to medium, you'll get closer to 50 FPS. And at low, you're basically not gaining anything in terms of FPS at all. In this game, performance isn't comparable to the deck at all, which runs it at 60 FPS on Ultra without a problem, in docked mode with the same upscaling. Playing Hades yielded close to 60 FPS. This game isn't very demanding, but it's a super quick reaction game so every dropped frame can get you hurt and ruin your run. And here it cannot stick to a smooth 60 FPS, with a few drops to 55 or 58. On this game, the deck seems to perform better, being able to handle 60 FPS without any problems, even when upscaling. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running at medium settings at 720p, with FSR enabled to upscale at 1080p, the game reaches around 30 FPS on average, which is okay. On low details, you can expect around 35 to 40. The deck can achieve closer to 50 FPS on low settings, so again, the UM580 falls far off the mark. Resident Evil 2 is a pretty demanding game, and running it at 720p, upscaled to 1080p, at medium settings, it managed 50 to 60 FPS, which is really, really good and playable. And here, finally, the performance is comparable with the Steam Deck. So, to sum it up, the UM580 is a bit less powerful than a Steam Deck, and that pretty much makes it less appealing than the Steam Deck itself as a console. You might as well buy a deck and use it in docked mode. It doesn't perform badly. On the contrary, for a device with no GPU, it's actually very competent. But at that price point, if what you're looking for is a gaming console first, you're probably better off buying a Steam Deck and using that. The APU that the deck uses and the optimization 
just give it the edge in terms of performance. Now where this mini PC really shines though, thanks to its powerful CPU, is emulation. So I couldn't really try it myself because I don't own any of these games physically, but other YouTubers gave this a shot and they came to very, very good conclusions on the power of that thing. I left a link to one such video in the description if you want to watch it, but basically you're gaming at 1080p 60 in most PS2 or earlier titles, and you can even reach that in a lot of PS3 games as well. And that's probably where this mini PC will have the edge, because the CPU is going to be a little bit more powerful than what you get on the deck, and the CPU is generally what decides the performance for emulation. So, what to make of the UM580? Well, for its price, it delivers a pretty great level of performance. It's very versatile, physically or performance-wise. You can hide it away, you can leave it on your desk, you can upgrade it, you can run basically anything with it. So, as a PC, this thing is an interesting proposition. The price is fair, the CPU is very powerful, it's got a healthy amount of RAM, it's upgradable, it's got two storage bays. It's basically going to run anything you want, so if the previous Minis Forum PCs that I reviewed were a little bit underpowered for you, this one might fit the bill. But as a gaming console, it's just not good enough. While the deck can be used as a handheld, this one needs to be plugged into a display, and this means running games at higher resolution or with upscaling. And in both cases, the UM580 is just a little bit shy of what you would need to game comfortably. At that price, you will be better served by using a deck in docked mode or simply buying a PS5 or Series X. So I'd recommend it for people who want a powerful PC in a small form factor. That's the main goal. If you also want to play games like indie titles or AAA titles, it's going to be able to do it in decent condition. 30 FPS, 40 FPS are absolutely attainable on this thing. But my dream of having that kind of price level and having a Steam Deck console are just not fulfilled with this device. But hey, that's on me for having this expectation. It's no fault of the product itself. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't, well, there's still a dislike button. And you can also tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel and help me make more of these videos, you can also click the super thanks button underneath the video, you can click the PayPal link in the description, or you can find links to my Patreon page or my YouTube memberships in the description as well. Both Patreon subscribers and YouTube members get access to a weekly podcast every Monday, where I talk about Linux, technology, the channel, personal things, generally everything that goes through my mind at the time, and you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So thanks everyone for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!